So I'm happy that I'm here. I'm more happy that you are here. And we deserve to visit one place together. And you can guess what place it will be. It will be the bank. So let's imagine you are just entering the branch. And maybe you are going to consult your investment. Or maybe you will discuss your mortgage for the new house. Or maybe you just need to withdraw the cash, maybe in foreign currency. With the investment or mortgage, you don't know exactly what will be the result. But with the cash withdrawal, we are pretty clear with your expectation. You just tell the amount, authorize it, and get the cash. Pretty easy. <clears throat> but what if, what if they say you, we are sorry, we cannot give you your cash because our system is not working. You might become a little bit nervous, maybe a little bit upset, and maybe you start to think if your money are safe enough. And if this happens to more customers, then this spreads around with the speed of the light. And in that point in time, <clears throat> many people at the bank start to have these kind of feelings. And why I'm telling you this story? Because uh, I, am the, I am the person that's part of my responsibility to prevent our organization from this kind of situation, and it's part of my job to avoid, avoid them. So my name is Peter Philip. I've been working for 25 years in banking IT industry and the last 15 years in the architecture field, which I'm most passionate about. <clears throat> but back to the story. Why we got so close to this kind of uh, virtual situation? And simply because our branch teller system was way too old. Written in Pascal, running on the test screens. Uh, it, it was old, and, but it was, the code was bug free, and it was running without the incidents. So many people, many stakeholders got the feeling that it is the most reliable system we have. But something was happening behind the scenes. The technologies were aging. The operating system database. <clears throat> and it resulted one day in the surprising situation when the developer came and told us, I'm not able to compile the source code anymore. And it was really bad news, because there is no bug fixing, no legal changes, nothing. And this is just one example. But there are many of them hiding around. And probably many of you can remind some, some similar situation from your organizations. And actually, it's highly probable that, that you can remind it, because during these Two days, yesterday and today, some thousands of technologies become obsolete. So it's a high probability that also you have one of these. <clears throat> so that's the good reason why we <clears throat> should talk about this topic a little bit. And we, sh we will then talk about the technical depth. But first of all, we should be on the same page. So let's define what is it. And our definition of technical debt is that <clears throat> it's any deficiency in the system that slows down any change. And basically, the difference or the extra effort we need to do is the interest we need to pay for this debt. <clears throat> OK, but <clears throat> where our, or where my journey started? It started with the two feelings. The first feeling was a frustration. And I had this feeling when I knew about some deficiency, about something wrong in our landscape, but I was among very few people that cared, and nobody else did. So I felt frustrated. Well, how can I move it forward when nobody is scared? And the second feeling was shame. And that did feeling, this feeling appeared <clears throat> when some incident happened, and after this incident, stakeholders came and asked me, OK, 
So do we have some other risk like this one in our landscape? Should we be aware of something? And I felt ashamed because I didn't have the answer, because I have no data and no clue what to say. And that was the moment that I started to think what to do, how we can deal with these situations. And the first principle I said to myself how to <clears throat> proceed was that I just don't want to be the bad news messenger. I would rather create some governance, create some system, and the system will help us, and the system will motivate the product owners to do some actions to, to work with this debt. So that was my vision. That was my dream, how to move forward. And this is the three chapters cookbook, how we did it. So I will lead you through this journey. <clears throat> and the first chapter of this book is about the collecting data. Because without the data, we can't steer anything, so we needed the data. And the first question was, where we can collect the data. And the most easy way how we can get them was just sit and write them down. So first, in, in our team, we sit down and say, OK, just write down anything wrong we know about in our landscape and put it on the list. We did it. Then we asked the architect, <coughs> the other in the organization, and gave them the same question. Just write down anything you remind. Fine. So we have the first data set, but it was far away from the quality I expected at the beginning. Because it was not complete. We didn't know, OK, is there, is there everything there or not? It was mixed up. So there were different kinds of uh, deficiencies, from big to small, from UX to integrations, from some business to, to infrastructure. So mixture. And even, the, even we knew that the biggest stones are not there, because nobody was so brave to write it down. <clears throat> but despite of all of these imperfections, there was one thing we could do with this data set, to sort it out. And when we were sorting, among the other classifications we did, we discovered one major. And it was the origin of the debt. And we discovered there are two of them, <clears throat> two reasons. The first one is the time. So as everything, also the technology is aging. And the age uh, <clears throat> slows down the future development, or it, it makes it more harder. The second reason, actually, we were the second reason. Our decision we take because there are some, sometimes the forces that result in some imperfect solution. And there are valid reasons to do this imperfect solution, but still they are imperfect. And knowing this, these two types, <coughs> we recognize also how we should collect the data so we will know that it's complete. And so we set up the alarm that rings every quarter, and we every quarter review the, our landscape and find or look where you're looking for the technology that became obsolete in the recent period or, are, or will become obsolete in near future. So we can write down the new debt. <laughs> and the second procedure was that we change our architecture review uh, procedure that way that every deficiency that is not incorporated in the solution is recorded somewhere into that registry. And from now on, we were sure that if we follow these two, uh, these two procedures, we will have the complete data about the debt. Great. So after this, we had the data. And we started to think, OK, what do we will do with it? How we will display them? And we created the chart. And this chart looks like this one. There is a x-axis which uh, represents the time, so it's not visible, but there are quarters down there. And on the y-axis, there is a size of the debt. So the aggregated, aggregated size of the debt of some, some unit. OK, we, we, we displayed it to the stakeholders. And, but something happened after 
sometime. This. The chart looked only on the pessimistic or dark side of the thing. And some stakeholders became so pessimistic, so they resigned for the discussion about this. Because they said, even though I'm trying, I'm doing my best, the debt is still growing, so why should I care? You're just giving us a crap and I, I will do something else. <clears throat> so we, we needed to rethink what we will do, because this was the dead end road. This is the real, real data example, how our dashboard at the first iteration looked like, and you can see the growing of the debt. So, we need to rethink, and this is what the second chapter will be about, and it will be about people, their roles, their goals, and their behavior. And we will start with the architects, and this is how he or she felt before. She was a little bit frustrated that uh, he or she is not able to have a discussion with the product owner, because product owner don't, doesn't care about uh, these, these, these things. <clears throat> so, he or she was not able to explain or uh, to discuss with the product owner and put some corrective actions on, the, on these deficiencies to the backlog. So, we have challenge again and we need to think, so what, did, what did we need to change? And we had a new goal. And the goal was, okay, how we can change the behavior of the product owners so they will be willing to do some actions to reduce the debt. Okay, and we started with stakeholder map and stakeholder analysis. And this is what came out of it. As an enterprise architecture, we recognize we should start somewhere else. We should start with the sponsors. It's, this is a sponsor, so if I translate, this is a friend, Fred, uh, is a C, from the ABC, the C. And we explained the sponsors what the debt means to them. And the advantage was that sponsors usually share the long-term vision or long-term side with the architecture. So we took some real example from the past or from, from the future, and we explained the sponsors how these debts can affect their long-term goals and emissions. So for example, we took our digital strategy, <coughs> we took the data from the branches, and we explained the sponsor that, uh, for example, the most frequent, most frequent service operation in the branch, which, me, which is a change of personal data, we will be not able to implement in digital until we do the major upgrade of our customer master data system. And after sponsors uh, understood this message, we agreed uh, with them that we will extend standard agile value streams and teams reporting package for the sponsors with one more chapter. So to the original chapters like KPIs, uh, deliveries, goals, value delivered and roadmap, we added a new chapter that is about the depth. So the, the sponsors have a platform where they can see the fitness of this product. And when they started to see this, they grabbed this opportunity, and they started to ask the question for the product owners. Some of the questions were very targeted, very specific. Some of the questions were <coughs> just generic, but it didn't matter. The important thing was that the discussion started, and there was a platform created. And this was the turning point when the direction of the interaction turned around, and as soon as the product owners understood that this is the topic that is on the table, and it will not <coughs> just evaporate, they start asking questions to the architect. And architect became happy because they suddenly had the space to explain what they wanted. And they explained what's the, on the dead list of this, pro or <coughs> of this product owner, so they can order the list, and the product owner knew what's the on the top. So what's the most risk thing? 
And up until now, it was as we planned. So as we did the stakeholder analysis, this was basically what we, <clears throat> what we discovered and how, how we planned, the, planned the, uh, our, our transformation. But then something that we haven't planned appeared. And some product owners started to ask for some benchmarks or some references because they wanted to, and some of them even wanted to compete with the others. So their dashboards will look better than the other ones. <coughs> and that reminded me that the, the dashboard. <coughs> so we also upgraded our dashboard. And this is how, what we introduced. So instead of the dead size, we changed the focus to the dead reduction pace. So basically on the x-axis is again the time and quarters. But on the y-axis, there is just number of actions that were done, and I mean done, done, in the specific period that reduces the debt. And <clears throat> this chart enabled much better discussions because the debt size is too much spoiled by the history. And history is often not the not, uh, responsibility of the current product owner. It's something that is out of his or her. Uh, influence. But this chart displays immediate feedback. So this chart displays what current product over does now. And so this chart became the great platform for all the stakeholders for the discussion because it gives feedback for everybody what is happening. And again, this is the Real example, how the second version of the dashboard look, looked like. <clears throat> so we still kept the dead size on the left side, but we introduced this right side, and the focus was always on the right side. Good, so now we have a data. We know how to display them and how to explain them. But you may have a comment that, OK, but it's still hard to fix it. And some items on the debt list maybe could stay there forever. And that's, that's correct. And so that's what the third chapter is about. And it's about how we can support the business to do this action. So how we can help them to make some corrective uh, stuff. And I will repeat. Here at the beginning, what I already said, that the first precondition of helping was that the, the, product, the product owners understand. And they understand what does it mean to them that there is a debt record somewhere, what is the risk of it, and what they should do. <clears throat> and we created some strategies that helps Help, help them with the last question, so what they should do. The first strategy is about the big stones. So these are the rocks that are above the capabilities of agile team or value stream or tribe, anything. So usually it are the cross-bank activities that affects many tribes or these are just actions, ones in the five, seven years that exceeds the normal resource capacity of the team. And for these kind of items, we agreed with the top management that every quarter on the company backlog level, there will be two special minus two and minus one priorities that will be filled up from this backlog. So basically, at the company level, every quarter, we, we eliminate two debts. And the product owners can apply, can, can propose that my debt is a big one and it should be put there. But still, IT decides and IT prioritizes among if there are more of them. But there is at least the gate where they can come and apply. Then for the mid-size, we, we teach them and we encourage them to use this debt registry and debt backlog. So we motivate them to use this as an input for the grooming session, 
look on the dead list, order it, and took one or two top, top items and possibly put it to the change backlog so it, it will be corrected. Maybe not the whole item, maybe just part of it, but to take something from there and put it into the change backlog. And for the smallest one, we do the similar thing. So, so we, we teach the teams and, and the value streams. But basically, the small ones are the ones that are fitting into one sprint, roughly. And we, <clears throat> we motivate the product owners that this should be left to the team. So the developers and the team decide, OK, this is the thing I would like to improve. So, so you don't need to care as a product owner, but let this uh, on the team and team decision so they will be happy that they are doing something that they like. So if I sum it up, all of these three strategies, basically what we, what we encourage the product owners and how we educate them to, to work these, these tiles, look on the size, choose the proper strategy and try to move tiles slowly from re left to right. Good, and how, how did it work? All of this stuff I told you. Here are some evidence. <clears throat> this is example of an email from the product owner of the mortgage value stream, where she asked, please come here, architects, explain me, explain me what are the debts, how can I treat them, and how can I prioritize them, I want to understand the risk. So they actively started to do what we wanted. They, they were the initial point of, of, the, of the action. The second evidence is this is the uh, debt reduction pace chart of our small business lending team. And as you can see, they do every quarter at least one corrective action. So they are repaying the debt slowly. And they, are, they incorporated this, this culture, this thinking into their routines. <laughs> and this is the example how the, our final or current, not final, but current dashboard looks like. So we kept there the debt size, we kept there the debt reduction pace, and we put also the list of the debts on the left side. So Everybody can transparently see so what is in the backlog, what is the fitness, what should be corrected. And there is a list of corrective action on the right side. So also everybody sees that what this unit is doing to improve the situation. Good. So we finished the cookbook and now we can have a look what we cooked. And this is the pizza, and the whole slice of pizza, or whole, whole pizza represents the number of debts we have in our debts registry. And all of the stuff we did, all of these actions and discussions and transformation, resulted in the situation that roughly half of the pizza is somehow recognized. So it means that all of the debts have some corrective action assigned to it. So there is some, some feature or some, some story or some epic anything, depends on the size, assigned. It doesn't need to be done, but it means that it's at least recognized and it's someone started to think about it and prepares the backlog. Some of but what's the most important thing is that roughly one-fourth of the pizza is already eaten. So basically, one-fourth of the debts is already closed, so it's fixed. And it means, even though this topic looked stinky and dirty at the beginning, at the end, it's quite crunchy as this pizza. Good, so we are at the end, and now it's plenty of time for your questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter. Yes, so you can ask questions uh, at uh, Slido. I have a question, and I am not really into this topic of data, I have to confess. Mm -hmm. So if it's a weird question, just tell me. <laughs> um, 
uh, do you maybe uh, is this just like one time advice or or um, advice for the teams uh, like on a specific topic or do you also do some ex- uh, internal trainings or something like that within the agile agile methodology mm-hmm. uh, it's not a one time exercise it's uh, it's constant education constant improvements and it's constant work to to adopt the, the, the routines, the product owners, the mindset, that the people start to th- incorporate also this backside of the products into their thinking, so they somehow manage the risk that obviously are hidden, and many people do not see them, but we, we, we try to bring them to the light and let let product owners to consider them. So it's it's never-ending story, and uh, every team, every unit is in the different stage of recognizing it. So some, some of them are working very actively, as we saw. Some of them are just still starting and asking. So, so it's, it's a journey. Uh, I can see some questions here. How long... Okay, I, I, will, uh, I will do the first one. Do you recommend to reserve a certain percentual capacity of the development team to tackle technical debt or to plan individual debt issues? Mm-hmm. Okay, understood. Uh, that, that's a valid question, and we were also thinking about it. Uh, but currently, we are not uh, following this pattern because we said, okay, it it it, it brings more uh, more certainty to the to this topic that I'm sure that 10 percent or 15 percent on any and any percentage is, is dedicated to this stuff. But I can't predict what will come. What value do we need to deliver? So I, I would be a little, a little bit some nervous if I'm not preventing delivery of some value in, that is bigger than reducing the debt. So that's why we quite stick to this reduction pace. So, so, we, so we measure if they are thinking about it, if they are doing something, even though we do not know if it is enough. So it still might be that the size is growing. We, we still are fine with this. But uh, this mindset is, in, in current state, this mindset is, is, is the crucial thing we want to develop, so, so we do not use this. But it is a valid uh, pattern, it could work somewhere, but we, we, we are not using it. How long does it take to eat that piece of pizza? <laughs> it's never ending. <laughs> Because, as I told, the, the time is running, and maybe it's running... Uh, fast enough to, to feed new items on the list. Uh, there is also, <coughs> I call it archaeology, so there is always something uh, excavated that we didn't know about, and, and we need to put it there. So uh, I think we, 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 we can, my dream is that we, we will saturate on some depth size, uh, and it, we will manage it. But basically, for now, I'm, again, I, I'm, I'm happy if the product owners recognize it, the list, they, they, they understood the risk, understand the risks, and they took those risks to the change backlog that they consider important. But you refer maybe to that piece that you showed that was removed, that marker. Okay, if, if it's a uh, piece of pizza, I, okay, I, I, I understood that the whole pizza. This piece of pizza, the, the, the data are about, uh, that are from the last year, so it's, it's about a year. How do you align different POs of the debt is cross squad or cross tribe? Mm-hmm. Okay, that, that's a very good question, and that's, uh, that's related to these strategies and the size. So, so, this, so the biggest stones, we just put it in the old company backlog when there is a governance how to coordinate many things if it's something in all company backlog. Uh, but usually what we, what we do is if, if, uh, if we get the initial idea that this should be the debt, we, we very quickly slice it. And basically the, the unit of slicing is the one system, one application. So we, even though someone says, okay, this technology is old, So we say, okay, these five applications are running on this technology, so we record five debts. And these debts are then dedicated to, speci- to 
one team because this application is dedicated to one team. So for the 90% of all, all the items on the list, we are able to slice it that way that, that it's assignable to one team and we do not uh, cope with these kind of issues. What measures have you done at the beginning of the pipeline so the debt was not created at the same base? Uh, what measures? Okay, uh, basically, the, if I understood the question correctly, the, these, these steps on the depth size uh, chart, they are mostly uh, as a result of this archaeology or some specific archaeological ex expedition, let's call it, when we, sometimes we, we just discovered the, the whole archaeology site where there were many depths, and then the, the second big step was that uh, in the one point of time we, we started to intentionally review the technologies and, and do, do a review of the whole landscape, and, and we put these kind of depths in the batch mode there. So that, that's why the pace is like, Normally, the, 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 these depths are coming from the, our solution. So when, when we decide to do the imperfect solution, and this is like pretty stable, uh, stable inflow, but uh, this this time time uh, originated depth, these are the steps because they are created in the let's say batch mode. If this was a question, how do you approach large technology depths? Uh, okay, ba basically, the, the, the question consists also of the answer. The large means that this is the, this big rock category. So, uh, for example, <coughs> uh, one of our database uh, engines, it, it was also old, but since there were more applications running on the sa same database of this old version, it, the, the, the activity that would upgrade this database will become too big and affected many, many people, many stakeholders. So, so we did, okay, that this is the, the risk is high, so we put it on the whole company backlog and coordinated all these teams so they can, uh, in the coordinated manner, deliver this upgrade. How do you deal with increasing debt uh, even after the initiative, or is it decreasing? As I said, uh, for now, I, I'm pretty fine if it is still increasing. So uh, I, I had no ambition to, to decrease it. So really, we are focused on this pace and, and this mindset. So because the, I consider it's the only option how we can come to the decreasing, because uh, if they start to think about it. And so that was one thing. And the second thing is, again, this risk-related thing. So. The depth size is a measure that is uh, some, some auxiliary measure, but it doesn't formulate the real impact. So the more important impact of it is are actually the risks. So if the product doesn't understand the risk and they manage the risk, and they manage the risk at the <coughs> reasonable level for them, that's perfect. So, so that, that's the better measure, but we do not have numbers for these risks, so we measure the size. It's just, as I said, uh, some auxiliary metrics that we can work with, but the risks are more important. Are vulnerabilities in open source libraries understood as technical debts? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and we, we are... We, actually, this happened uh, quite recently in first quarter. We are adding because we have this engine, this depth engine, so uh, already working, and we are still adding some new sources. So, as I said, we, we, we do this review about the end of support for technologies, and recently we added these vulnerabilities also as a source of the depth. So, if there is a <coughs> new, new vulnerabilities discovered, we add them as a depth, and they are prioritized as every other, every other item. Debt was created also by developers. Were you trying to decrease the debt created by own people before it occurred? Uh, okay, maybe here I uh, currently, as, as we are the architects, so we work at some abstraction level. 
So what what uh, I have under control and I can uh, manage very precisely are I would call it architecture depth. So uh, integration, uh, technologies, and these kind of things. If there is some development depth, so, so technical depth inside the application, we allow the teams to use the same, same structure, but we, we currently do not have any formalized procedure how to, how to gather it. So basically, some teams are using it, that's putting the, their deficiencies into the registry, some not. So, so for the, let's say, design and coding that, it's, it's not complete, the registry, definitely. Thank you very much. We are out of questions. Uh, that was Peter Philip from Tatra Banka. Thanks a lot. Thank you.